In this unit, we're going to be working with perimeter, area, volume, and temperature. In this video, we're going to look at specifically at length and perimeter. All right, hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to look at length and perimeter. So linear measurements are those that can be measured by a line. They're, they're uh, measurements uh, that if you, for example, in some cases, if you unfolded it, uh, and you could lie it along a straight line, and then you can measure it from end to end using the appropriate instrument here. So measurements like perimeter and circumference, and circumference is kind of what I was talking about here, because circumference is, is, like it says right here, the perimeter of a circle. Okay, You wouldn't specifically describe that maybe immediately or think about it as, as being linear, because you know that it's round. But if you were to cut that and open it up you could lie it long you could lie it down flat and then use a a meter stick or something like that to measure it if you if you wanted okay so it is considered a linear measurement as opposed to like an area measurement or a volume measurement which are becoming two dimensional and, and three dimensional so the units that we use here are going to be centimeters meters inches feet yards etc just these linear measurements okay and so again just to repeat here the perimeter is the total length around a two dimensional object Okay, uh, and you're going to have some formulas on your formula sheet, but quite honestly, when it comes to perimeter, you just add the sides together. Unless you're talking about a, a circle, in which case, that's a little bit different here, and there are a couple formulas you're going to use here. Um, in one case, you might think of the circumference as being pi, and there's that, that famous constant, you know, 3.14159, blah, 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 on, on, on forever. Pi multiplied by the diameter, or... The circumference is going to be 2 pi r. Okay, 2 times pi multiplied by the radius. So either one of those could be used to figure out the circumference of a, of a circle or the distance around the outside of a circle. Now, the easiest way really to just get it, the hang of this is just to do some examples here. So let's take a look at a few. Okay, so the question tells us to calculate the perimeter of the following shapes. Now, you, you got to understand there's going to be uh, a, some assumptions that we kind of have to make here to make this work. For example, this first one here, I have to assume that this is basically a rectangle, that these are 90 degrees here, okay? Or else I, I'm really kind of stuck here and I, I don't know what to do. Now, making that assumption here, I know that if this is 12, if the length here is 12, so is the side opposite. And I use those little lines there to indicate that those two side lengths are going to be the same. And then over here, this is 5. I might put a, like, a little double little notch there to show that these two sides are the same. So my perimeter is going to be 5 centimeters plus 5 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters. And in fact, we can be a little bit lazier than that. 2 times 5 centimeters plus 2 times... 12 centimeters. And that'll give me 10 centimeters plus 24 centimeters, or a total of 34 centimeters. Okay, to go all the way around here. So what I might have done there is notice that at this stage right here, uh, I could have written that as twice the width plus twice the length. Okay, could have just used that right there. With this shape right here, Although it's, it's not quite looking like a square, these little lines here, remember, indicate that all four of those sides are the same. And so I know that each one of these is supposed to be 12 centimeters. And so the perimeter here is going to be 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. And I'm not writing the centimeters just so I can get through that a little bit quicker here. Or in other words, 4 times 12 centimeters. Or 48 centimeters. Now, at this point right here, another thing that I could have written, notice that this was going to be four times uh, the side length okay, of the square. Each one of those is exactly the same. Now, with a triangle like this, and this is an isosceles triangle here, and I know that because the, the little marks here indicate that those two sides are the same. So I know this is also going to be 12 centimeters. With a triangle here... Um, because it can be equilateral, it could be scalene, okay, in this case it's isosceles, uh, the easiest thing to do, quite honestly, is simply just to add up the sides. So 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 9 centimeters, okay? 
And so that's going to end up being 24 plus 9 centimeters. It's going to end up being 33 centimeters overall. Okay. With a triangle here, I mean, unless you know exactly what kind of triangle is you're looking at, eh, there's really no nice little formula. I mean, I could have said 2 times A plus B. Okay. But that's a little bit more awkward. That's fine. Here, we have what we call an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. At least... Again, that's the assumption that I'm kind of making here, uh, that these two sides are parallel to each other, but it, it looks like that's the intention. Okay, um, Those little marks there tell me that these are both the same, 10 centimeters. And so my perimeter, and the easiest way to do this one here, is, again, is just to add them up here, is going to be 2 times 10 centimeters. It's going to take a little shortcut because those are the same, plus 12 centimeters, plus 15 centimeters. And so that's going to be 20 plus 12 will be 32, plus 15 will be 47 centimeters. Now, over here, perimeter for this L shape here. Okay, well, now I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to do this in, in one particular way here, and then I'm going to back up and I'm going to do this in another way, just to, to show you what you could do here. But what I want you to understand here is, the distance around this, okay, I can I can approximate or sorry, I can I can get an equivalent distance around it by changing the shape a little bit. So this line segment right here, I could take this line segment and slide it up so that it was up there instead. I could take this line segment right here and slide it over so it's right there. In, in which case, what I'm doing here is basically creating a rectangle. In which case, it's going to be 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. We were looking at that just over here with that very first one here. Now, don't worry about the 3, don't worry about the 4. Those are just these little pieces here. I know that the width is going to be 11. And I know the length is going to be 12. And so this would be 22 plus 24 I'm getting a perimeter of 46 centimeters. That's one way I could do it. I could I could just recognize here that whether I do this this length here, whether I kind of like draw this one out here or draw it out here, it's the same length. Whether I draw this side here or up here, it's the same length. So by just sliding those around, I can create a rectangle. It's an easier shape for me to work with. Or if you don't like that, and that's totally fine, another way that we could do this would be to take all of the little shapes here, all of the little sides here. Let's start with 11. And let's go around here. So we're going to take 11. Okay, so I've got that one. Then we're going to add 3. Now, this distance right here, I don't know what it is. Now, I know that the overall distance from the top to the bottom is 11. And I know that this distance over here is going to be 4. Okay, meaning that this distance right here from that line to this line is going to be 4. So overall, this is 11. This little bit is 4 here. Well, that means that this must be 7. Because 7 and 4 get you 11. So that finishes it off here. So I know that this little piece here must be 7. So I would add 7 to that, and I've got this piece. I can do the exact same thing here. I don't know the length of this side. I know that the length all the way across is going to be 12, and I know that this little piece right here is going to be 3. So 3 plus something has to get me 12. Well, that means that 12, if you subtract that 3 from it, what are you left with? And the answer is 9. So we're going to add 9. That gives me this side. I'm going to add 4. That gets me this side. And then I'm going to add 12, this side right down here. Now, just to show you, just to illustrate that these are both equivalent here on my calculator, just so you can see it, 11 plus 3 plus 7 plus 9 plus 4 plus 12 should get me third, oh, 11. <laughs> okay, Woo. for quick, just a quick second there, I got quite embarrassed because that wasn't what was supposed to happen here. Let's do that again. Okay, so I'm going to focus this just a little bit. There we go. So 11 plus 3, plus 7, plus 9, plus 4, plus 12. And there's my 46 centimeters. Yeah. So it really, really shouldn't matter. Now, so we've already taken a quick look at 
at calculating um, the circumference, at least uh, before we got into the examples, we started to look at through some of the examples here. And remember that my formulas are this, uh, 2 pi r, which is probably the more popular one, honestly, or the circumference is just pi times the diameter. So let's take a look at these couple of examples here. Okay. In this case, I've given the diameter. So maybe what I want to do here is I want to use the uh, formula that uses the diameter. So my circumference here would be pi times diameter, pi times 62 inches. Now, when you do this, we're going to go to the calculator here. When you do this, I encourage you to use the pi button, 62 times. And then for my calculator right here, pi is right there. So I would press second. And I'd press that button to get the pi symbol. Now, the reason for that is I, I know that at, at some point here, you might have been told that it's it's okay to use 3.14 as an approximation for pi. And then, you know, in a lot of quick cases, that is, it's a, it's a good approximation. But it doesn't go quite far enough. And, and sometimes there's a little bit of a rounding error that gets created that, that can creep up and become a kind of a larger issue if you're doing multiple calculations. Uh, the nice thing about the pi button is, is it gives you a lot of decimals. Okay, uh, it gives you more than you would see on the on the calculator screen. That doesn't completely eliminate the uh, the the error that you get when you round, because we're always going to round when we're dealing with pi, right? It's this infinite decimal, but at least it minimizes the issue um, a bit. And when I press enter here, and I'm going to round that like the question says to the nearest tenth, so 194.8. So it's approximately 194.8 inches. Here, I've got the radius, so I'm going to use my circumference as 2 pi r, 2 times pi, and my radius here is 3. And again, on my calculator, 2 times, and I'm going to use the pi times 3. And to the nearest tenth, that will round to 18.8 approximately centimeters. There we go. Let's take a look at a couple more here. So Kendra is designing a sandbox for her little sister. If she wants it to be six feet long and four feet wide, what will the perimeter be? So now we're going to be looking at some problems here where what's happening is they're just describing the scenario. <coughs> Sorry. And, and we've got to interpret what's going on. So a diagram always helps. Diagrams help. Okay. So in this case here, she's going to create a rectangular sandbox. She wants it to be six feet long and four feet wide. So the perimeter, because this is going to be rectangular, will be twice the width plus twice the length. So two times four feet plus two times six feet, eight feet plus 12 feet, 20 feet. Okay. So the distance all around that will be 20 feet. Let's take a look at another one. What is the circumference of a circular hula hoop that has a diameter of 90 centimeters? Okay, okay. So there's our hula hoop. Goes right across here. There's our diameter. And in this case, our diameter is 90 centimeters. Okay, well, I, I've got a formula that does that. I've got pi times d. So this will be pi times 90 centimeters. And I go to my calculator. Pi multiplied by 90. And we'll round the way we did before here. It doesn't say what to round to. So 282.7. 282.7 centimeters. Okay, so that's starting to get close to 3 meters there. Okay, just a couple more here. Maisie is building a fenced pasture for her horses. She needs the pasture to be 60 feet long and 100 feet. And she needs three rows of fencing to keep the horses secure. What is the total fencing uh, that she requires? Okay. So now here's a spot where that diagram is going to make a big difference here. So here's sort of what they're trying to describe here. Uh, let's say that this is your, let's say this is your 60 feet. And this is your 100 feet. Okay. Now, she, she needs the pasture to be 60 feet by 100 feet. And she needs three rows of fencing to keep the horses secure. Okay, well, we could do this uh, in a couple of different ways. 
So one way is going to add a little bit more to the to the length here. One is going to take it away here. But we need three rows of fencing to keep the horses secure. So I could either have one, two, three, or I could do it like this. Here's 60 feet. Here's 100 feet. And I could go like that. So which one is it? doesn't really say. So we'll do both. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find the, the total amount of fencing she's going to need here is going to be basically, in this case, three times my width plus two times my length, or three times 60 plus two times 100. Okay, so 180. Whoops, you can't see that anymore. Plus 200 or 380 feet. Or the total amount that you're going to need here is going to be 3 times 100 plus 2 times 60. So 300 plus 120, whoops, 420 feet. So it kind of depends on how she wants to do this. And I don't think it's 100% clear from the question here. I'm just going to read that again here. She needs the pasture to be 60 feet by 100 feet, and she needs three rows of fencing to keep the horses secure three rows of, I don't know, maybe that means we got to go around it uh, three times. I don't know. Anyway, that's that's kind of how I interpret that right there. Now, what is the perimeter of the track below? Okay, so we're looking at the perimeter of the track here. One of the things we have to assume, okay, is that this piece right here is kind of a half circle and this piece over here is another half circle. So our perimeter around the whole the whole thing here is going to be this length right here, this 84.4 meters plus 84.4 meters. Then I've got a half circle here and a half circle here. Well, altogether, that's, that's one full circle. I'm looking at the perimeter of a full circle, which I know I can shortcut by doing pi times the diameter. And I have the diameter here, 73 meters. So I would multiply that, uh, sorry, add to that pi multiplied by 73.0 meters. And now actually this is one of those things where you can just do this right on your calculator if you wanted to. 84.4 plus 84.4 plus pi times 73. And just like before we went around to the nearest tenth, that's 398.1 meters. Okay. And there you go. So I hope that gives you uh, a little bit of uh, comfort level with finding perimeter and circumference. <laughs>